Good morning. Welcome to Mays Manor United Methodist Church. This month we have been exploring some of the best places in Ohio to rest, renew, and reconnect with God. We light this candle as a symbol that God is in the house. And not just our house, but your house too. As we come together this morning, let's begin worship with song. For the last several weeks, we have invited you to visit some of the best places in Ohio. For the last couple of weeks, we have encouraged everyone to participate in the Best of Ohio Photo Challenge, where you would travel to each of these places and send us a picture of yourself to prove you were there. This past week, I finished my bingo board. While completing my board, I got to see the Columbus skyline from a distance, and I'm not sure if it's because I'm now trapped in my house 24-7 or just the fresh air. But whatever the reason, I loved it. In this next picture, you'll see me in the dark. I'm in there somewhere, I promise. Every week, I am captured on film for Sunday worship at home, but in this picture, you'll see my dad in his pink lucky socks, which he wears every week. So for those of you who have wondered if Pastor Ryan still wears weird socks, I can assure you he does. He didn't have to visit every space on the bingo board, but you were more than welcome to try. 
Now we want to take a few moments to say hi to everybody. I have my daughter Lily serving as our liturgist. My daughter Eva is behind the camera. Uh, thanks to the Zeidner family for helping out with all the technology and thanks to everyone who has uh, helped put the music together for this morning. For everyone on Facebook, let's go ahead and say hello to each other by posting a comment as well as letting us all know who all is watching from your home. Now let's join together in the call to worship. The Lord gives us rest. The Lord renews our spirit. The Lord reconnects with our soul. The world proclaims God's handiwork. Now let's join together in our opening hymn. Oh, 
at Mace Manor, our mission is to be a church where people actually live like Jesus. And, for the past month, we have been learning that Christ teaches us to make time to be renewed by God. Since this is the last Sunday of June, we want to give you a quick preview at the, some of the ministries that are coming up during July. July is our month of service, so we will be having a drive through produce market. The walk-in closet is open by appointment only. We also are going to have some special events at the church, including a free outdoor church concert. We will have our regular church chats, where everyone is invited to get to know their neighbors, hear updates about the church while we learn to do ministries during a pandemic, and ask any questions you might have. We will also have a virtual vacation Bible school. We will continue to have the pastor's Bible study and Sunday school classes for all ages by video and phone. Worship will continue to be online and by phone while we encourage each other to use our gifts to serve the people around us by giving them nice surprises. We do also want to uh, let everybody know we have an exciting new ministry we're opening, which is Silent Prayer in the Sanctuary, where people will be invited to come into the sanctuary um, wearing masks and keeping distance, um, but, but to have some time of prayer and reflection in the sanctuary. That will be on Thursdays from 5.30 to 6 p.m., beginning on July the 9th. You can learn more about these things in the weekly May's News email. And even though this month is coming to a close, let's all continue to celebrate the good things of this world. And now we will have our prayer for the children, which will be led by Lily. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for taking care of us for the past month, and I pray that you let all children find ways to serve their neighbors, even in times of isolation. And all God's children say, Amen. Let's take a few moments now to collect the prayers of the people. You can go ahead and type your prayers into the comments on Facebook, but please do not give anyone's last names for privacy reasons. First, let's take some time to think about things that we have seen in the news in this past week that raise our anxiety and our fear. Lift those prayers up to God and let those worries go. Picture the people who you know in your personal life who are in some special need of God's grace. Lift those prayers up to God and let those worries go. And take a few moments to think about also the, the good things that you have experienced in this past week, the little mercies, the guidance that God has given you, the, the strength that you have been offered to put one foot in front of the other. And lift those praises up to God. As we come together, let us settle into stillness. Slowly, ever so slowly, we center our minds and our hearts. Let your cares and your weariness fall away. Enter deeply into silence. Be one with the universe. Be one with the sun and the stars. Be one with the one who is mystery, who created the heavens and the earth. As we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now the written word will be read by our lay leader, Erica. Good morning, Mays Manor. Our scripture today is Psalm 8, 1 through 9. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. 
You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. At this time, we will be receiving our tithes and offerings. Uh, we very much appreciate the support that people have shown to the church over these last few months, and we want to encourage everyone to continue to support the church and our mission. You can do that in a couple of different ways. You can do it online by going to mazemanorumc.org slash give, or you can take this time to go ahead and get your checks ready and put them in their envelopes during our offering song. The Word of God is alive and active among us. Amen? I was 30 years old when I discovered the joy of travel. Travel was not exactly convenient for me at that time. I had always wanted to travel, but it always seemed like there was some reason not to. And in those days, I was a single dad raising three kids. I was working full time in a church, and I was frankly, quite broke. Um, so, so, so it seemed like there was always uh, some excuse not to travel, but, but one day I learned one of the single most important lessons about travel, and that is either you go or you don't. And I went. I, I began to travel for work, the West Ohio Conference sent me to film mission partnerships in seven countries spread across four continents. I began to travel with my kids. I've now taken my family to all 48 states you can somewhat reasonably drive to. And I will concede that the word reasonable is something of a subjective term in our house. Now my oldest four kids are all seasoned travelers. Uh, only Vivian is not. And she has spent one third of her life in quarantine, so don't judge her. Actually, she's only nine months old, so what are you doing judging her anyway? Now, in, in, in my travels, I have fallen in love with going to the people and the places. This is the world God has made. And God wants us to see the world. Our Bible reading today is a psalm about God's world. It echoes the story of creation from Genesis 1, and it praises God the Creator, as well as takes a look at our place as human beings in creation. So let's read between the lines of Psalm 8. It says, O Lord, our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The first sentence here both opens the psalm and closes the psalm. So, so the psalmist is stopping what he is doing to praise God. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. Out of the mouths of babes is one of those phrases that is uh, very popular and well known, um, although the rest of this uh, sentence is kind of hard to translate and the, the meaning of it is uh, frankly somewhat unclear. 
says, when I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? The psalmist looks at the vastness of the universe, the heavens, the moon, the stars, and he is reminded of just how small we are as people, and he considers that it is amazing to think that God still cares for each of us. Yet you have made people a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. There are various translations of this verse. Um, some say a little, a little lower than God. Some say a little lower than God. Some say a little lower than angels. Um, in, in reality, the, the word that is translated here is, is really commonly used to say God. So, so the other translations are probably just trying to avoid uh, any sense of blasphemy by equating people too closely with God. But, but the real message here is that there is a special and unique relationship between God and people. You, you have given the people dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. So God gives people dominion over the rest of the world. Their place was to take care of the rest of creation. So, so in, and if we think back again to Genesis 1, we are told that creation is both good and useful. So, so, so our job is to help it to continue to be good and useful. We take care of it so that it takes care of us. And, and so, so God gives people this world with all of its beauty. Then in verse 9, the psalm concludes with the repetition of the first phrase, saying, O Lord our Sovereign, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. And with all of these different uh, verses, uh, e each of which has its own beauty in it, our, our key verse today is going to come from verse 6, which says, You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. There are a few points that I want to draw out about what we see happen in this psalm. The first is the psalmist stopped to praise God because God had made the vastness of the universe. And yet, God still cared for the people. So God gave us this world with all of its beauty. This morning, I want to invite you to see the works of God's hands. Every now and then, you need to stop what you are doing to praise God. And I will confess that this pandemic has made it a little bit harder for me to praise God. And, and one of the reasons for that is because I, I believe that travel is good for the soul. And, and, and over the course of the last 10 years, travel has become something that is vital to my system. So, so, so for me in these last few months, as I have been canceling plans and changing plans and rearranging plans, um, I, I, I've had this, uh, this sense of sadness where sometimes I find myself feeling a little bit like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, you know? Um, being sad about everything that's going on around me and saying, oh, nobody cares about me. And there were moments in that when I was too busy feeling sorry for myself to stop what I was doing and praise God. But God has made the vastness of the universe. Several of the Psalms in the Bible praise God's works. And in fact, I, I personally would say that the Psalms have uh, several of the most uplifting and inspiring uh, passages and, and, and phrases in the entire Bible. Now, over the course of this month and the last few weeks, we have taken a look at just a few of those Psalms. In Psalm 150, it says, Let everything that breathes praise the Lord as God invites us to rest and praise. Psalm 33 says, Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, as God invites us to reconnect with our history 
and our ancestors. And Psalm 24 says, lift up your heads, as God invites us to be renewed by the Creator of everything. Through these psalms, God invites us to rest, renew, and reconnect. They draw us in to rely on God's care. And it is amazing to think that God cares for the people. God wants to take care of us, so it is good for us to make time for God to take care of us. That is one of the benefits of travel and leisure. We stop what we are doing to be taken care of by God. With that in mind, this week I, I, I finally completed my Best of Ohio bingo card, and I wanted to share with you some of my favorite stops from along the way. I was really surprised by how gorgeous Hayden Falls was. That was a spot I did, had never been to before. And when we went there, uh, there was a caution tape that, that was uh, laying to the side of the entrance to go down to the falls. And uh, we walked by and went down. There were several people down there, and we took our picture. And, and then after we left, about a week later, we learned that that caution tape was actually supposed to be blocking the entrance, and, and the falls were supposed to have been closed. So, oops. Another place that was new for me was the Homestead Metro Park. Uh, that was out in the middle of nowhere. That took forever to get to, but it was also a nice big park um, that was really pretty. I at least had a lot of fun taking this picture of Lily out in the rain. Eva got the honor of taking the selfie in front of the gavel downtown, and before we started this game, I, I'd always thought that that was a statue of Thor's hammer, so I'm, I'm not entirely sure why we would have a, a statue of a gavel. And Lily played follow the leader with Bigfoot out at the Olentangy Indian Caverns. And I was happy to see that Bigfoot was respecting the safety and health of people around him by wearing a mask. And I will say, having completed the card, I was really surprised by how much fun it was. As I enjoyed going to all of these new places and beautiful places and historic places, um, I couldn't help but move from feeling sad about the places I couldn't go to to satisfied by the places that I still could. God made the vastness of the universe. And that includes Ohio and the beauty of the world right here. God gives us this world with all of its beauty. I want to thank everybody who played along with the game, and I do want to take just a moment to celebrate some of my favorite pictures that you took as you made your way through the bingo card and also in the responses you made to requests for favorite places on Facebook. The Phil family took a great picture of uh, flowers that look like the American flag at the State House. The Zeidners have a peaceful shot of Max and Ella re relaxing at a pond. James put on his biking helmet to ride through the Park of Roses. Alexis showed a lot of enthusiasm as she posed with Chief Leatherlips. I'm not sure who this person is, but I do imagine this is probably one of the best pictures that was ever taken of them. And Sean took an envious shot of himself kayaking in one of his favorite places to rest, out on the water. And for the record, I'm with Sean. I'd almost rather be kayaking than anywhere else. You can check out all of these uh, different pictures and more in the Maze News email that was sent out this past Friday. And one of the things that I really appreciated as we came to the end of this game was a, a message that somebody sent to the church. That, and, and it said, This challenge was the best game I've ever done. This brought so much happiness back to us. I can't thank you enough for doing this. 
And the truth is, it really was a, a lot of fun. It gave people an opportunity to experience the joy of travel, the joy of history, the joy of the works of God's hands. And one of the things that I really thought was neat about it was we didn't have to go set up any of these places for people to go to. All we did was encourage people to, to make the time to go and look and see the beauty that was already there. And God wants us to see the world. Every now and then, you need to stop what you are doing to praise God. Because God has made the vastness of the universe. And it is amazing to think that God still cares for the people. You are the work of God's hands. God wants you to make time to rest. God wants you to make time to be renewed. God wants you to make time to reconnect with God. So keep going to your favorite spots to relax. Keep going to historic places. Keep visiting your sacred spaces. And keep enjoying the best of Ohio and the best of God's world. God gives us this world with all of its beauty. Let's pray. God, we give thanks to you for this world that you have made. We confess to you that there are times when we find it difficult to stop what we're doing in order to praise you. So we invite you to send your Holy Spirit into our lives today so that we can recognize the beauty that you have made and that we can make time to rest and to be restored in you. These things we ask in the name of Christ, and all God's people say, Amen. Now let's celebrate the God who cares for the world and its people with song.
Now let us trust in God, let us live like Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us make time to rest, renew, and reconnect with God. Let's all jump on Facebook to say goodbye to each other, and I hope you had fun getting out of your pajamas to go visit some of the best of Ohio. And remember, the church is not a building, the church is the people. So even though our building may still be partially closed, the church is always open. Amen.